Imagine trying to survive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft, where all it takes is one death and your entire world is gone. But instead of the normal challenges of vanilla, you're playing in Enigmatica 6. This pack has over 300 mods and introduces tons of features. Spooky lava caverns, beautiful end islands, and zombies who can deal 8.5 hearts of damage when you are 13 hours into an attempt. In these 100 days, I had three goals. Progress through some tech mods, defeat the ender dragon with a rail gun, and grab myself an elytra. This video took over 60 hours to record and edit, so if you do end up enjoying the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing. I had a ridiculous amount of fun making this video and I'd love to make more in the future. I started off on day one by opening the quest book and collecting all the free stuff. I then chopped down a bunch of trees and started exploring the area. I came across a village and stole one of their beds because, you know, the more times I sleep, the less footage there is to edit, oh, sorry, the less likely I'll be to die. On day two, I continued to explore. I found some massive pumpkins and reached an icy shore. On this shore, I found one of those drowned villages, but for some reason the chest wouldn't open, so I just decided to leave. It was then that I discovered one of the most beautiful overworld biomes I've ever seen. I might have had a bit too much fun here. I continued following the river until the ice ran out, and discovered a sweet looking pre-generated house. It seemed to be empty, so I decided to place down some chests and just call it home. On day three, I collected some more wood and destroyed an evil spider using the ancient art of hand-to-leg -like combat. Also, I gained an extra heart from eating enough types of unique foods. Dope. I still needed stone, so I started to mine. After a lot of digging, I finally found a cave which had some coal for torches. I even found a vein of diamonds before seeing any iron. Like, come on, when does that happen? On day four, I cooked up some charcoal to smelt some osmium ore. It's just as good as iron, so it'll do the trick for now. I went back to collect the diamonds all excited, but it literally was just one. I continued mining and unlocked a trinket from breaking some coal. It gave me the ability to set my attackers on fire, but I didn't equip it because I knew that if they then hit me, I would get set on fire, so why would I want that? Now that I had a decent amount of iron in day five, I decided to craft some armor and a shield. I also wanted to create a backpack which would essentially give me extra inventory space, but it required leather, so I went out to look for cows. During my exploration, I found a loot chest, and using my incredible hypersonic superhuman reaction time, I actually noticed a hiss and escaped just in time before getting blown up. I also stumbled across what looked like a variation of a woodland mansion. I was nowhere near strong enough to take it on, but I knew some of the rooms had bookshelves, so I snuck my way in through a window and borrowed a few for an enchanting setup later on. On day 6, I collected the leather I needed through some perfectly respectful and humane methods. I also climbed up a tall tower which had some awesome loot. I found an umbrella which basically gave me slow falling, and a cloud in a bottle giving me the ability to double jump. My last duty of the day was to craft the backpack. Looking swank if I do say so myself. On day 7, my beginner's luck was definitely put to the test. I stayed up a little too late last night, allowing a bunch of mobs to spawn, including this crazy witch. I was hit with poison, and not knowing whether poison could kill me in hardcore mode, I ran back into my house, churned through my food supply, low-key freaking out a little bit. But once I recovered, I went back out to take care of the witch and started to collect tons of wood for a future build. I lit up the ground around my house to prevent mobs from spawning there overnight and spent the entirety of days 8 and 9 mining. I found a lot more diamonds this time. In addition to the usual cave monsters, I was attacked by a wolf spawning creature thingy. I unfortunately had to put the wolves down as they didn't seem to like me that much. After the long mining session, I was too lazy to find my way back so I just dug a new staircase back up to the surface. On day 10, I started the mechanism mod. This mod has some really cool machines. I crafted a metallurgic infuser so I could sound smart, but also so I could create some steel, which is needed for pretty much everything else later down the line. The machines require power to run, so for now I crafted a sterling dynamo, which runs off of coal. I also crafted a time in a bottle, which will allow me to speed up machines with time that it collects by sitting in my inventory. Doesn't make much sense, but hey, I'll take it. Day 11 was crazy. I decided to make an infinite water source in my house, you know that little like 2x2 two two thing? But when I broke a hole in the floor, I realized there was a secret basement to the house with a loot chest. I checked to make sure that the chest wasn't rigged to blow up my house, and then opened it. There was a totem of undying. <laughs> I laughed at myself for not finding this earlier, but hey, better late than never. I needed nickel to create more of the mechanism machines, so I headed back to the mines. I spent quite a while down there, I defeated a really powerful zombie by cheesing it, and also found a massive underground lava lake. I saw some diamonds and lapis down there, so I used my bucket to traverse around the outside of the lake. Now this next part literally made me laugh out loud. There were fish falling from a glitched out lake. I collected some obsidian and just made my way out. Days 14 through 17 were dedicated to armor and enchants. Now that I had obsidian, I set up my enchanting table outside and crafted some refined obsidian ingots. 
Without getting into the nitty gritty details, the process required a combination of diamonds, obsidian, and osmium. Tools and armor made from this refined obsidian, I believe, are slightly better than diamond. I started to enchant the armor and the results were alright. I mean, I'll improve them later, but this was at least a start. On day 18, I made a portal to the nether to check out my spawn. I was close to a large lava lake, which would be perfect for pumping lava from the nether back to my base in the overworld, and this is because I wanted to set up a better power generation system that churned through lava instead of coal. But to do that, I first needed some ender tanks, which require blaze rods. Thus, I set off exploring for a nether fortress. The umbrella and double jump made traversing the nether a lot faster, but it also felt a little bit dangerous since I was making riskier jumps. Near the end of day 18, I found a nether fortress, but was given a warm welcome from some wither skeletons. Most of the chest loot wasn't very good, but I did find some night vision goggles. Night vision is a blessing and a curse. Basically, from now on, I'll be too lazy to light anything up. On day 19, I finally found the blaze spawner. I hung around there until I collected 8 blaze rods, and then used a waystone to teleport home at the cost of some experience. The last thing I needed for the ender tanks was ender pearls. However, it was raining. I mean, personally I love rain, but for some reason endermen don't seem to enjoy it. By day 20, it was still raining, so I decided to build a new house which would have more space for more machines and item storage. After building for a while, the rain finally stopped. I explored for a bit, found an enderman, and got myself a pearl. On day 21, I came across what looked like an ice temple, but there were a lot of strays inside, so I ran away. I crafted up the ender tanks and went back to the nether to set up the power system. The way this works is that I have a magmatic dynamo which uses lava to generate power for the pump, and then the pump pulls lava from the lava lake and puts it into the ender tank, and then the ender tank fills up the magmatic generator, and then tap into that with an identical tank in the overworld. So with this new power source set up, I crafted another mechanism machine, and I'm now able to double my ores by enriching one ore into two dust, and two dust into two ingots. Nice. On day 22, I got a mining gadget and crafted the expensive 3x3 upgrade for it. I charged it up and started to dig a large hole in the ground down to bedrock. This device uses a lot of power, but it's really really fun to use and looks awesome. I found a skeleton spawner on the way down, but didn't want to break it just in case I wanted to use it later. On day 23, I made it down to Y11 and started a 3x3 strip mine with my new mining gadget. I killed a skeleton boss thing and made my way back home. I put all my ores in for smelting and decided to craft a refined obsidian paxel. This is basically a singular tool that performs the function of a shovel, axe, and pickaxe, just so I don't take up as much hotbar space with all my tools. During days 24 to 26, I continued work on the construction of my new house factory building thing. I made my windows out of clear glass, which is way better than regular glass in my opinion. I fiddled around with the design a bit, but settled on a pine floor, a dark oak roof, and some dark oak accents on the outside to add depth to the walls. The result isn't the best thing in the world, but it will serve its function. On days 27 through 28, I wanted to start on the Refine Storage mod. It's a mod that lets me store my items digitally as long as the system is provided with power. This makes my storage rooms way more compact, and it'll also let me search for items by just typing in their name rather than having to open 30 different chests and spend a whole bunch of time trying to find what I want. So to get this started, we need a few things. I need a lot of slime, string, and nether quartz. So I traveled to a nearby floating slime island and just collected some slime. I then came back and started a farm for both industrial hemp, which I can then craft into string, and wheat. When I popped back into the nether for the quartz, I found a poor cow that had gotten lost. So I spent a couple minutes pushing the cow back through, I collected the nether quartz, and then went back home. From day 29 to 31, I started crafting the things I needed for refined storage. I made a controller, a 64k storage disk, and a disk drive. The last piece of the puzzle was a crafting grid, but to make this, I needed glowstone, which I forgot to get from the nether, so back I went. I couldn't find any easily reachable glowstone, so I decided to just pillar up to some in the ceiling. Once I collected it, I headed back home and made the crafting grid. With the items all ready to go, I set up the components in my new house. Obviously, the system required power, so I also brought over my lava power system and set it up in the corner. After routing some cables under the floor to hook up the power, the system was finally online. 
I enjoyed the rest of day 31 moving all of my items from my chests into this new system. If there was a list of the most satisfying things in modded Minecraft, this would definitely be at the top of that. On day 32, I finished the move-in process by placing and hooking up my mechanism machines. I crafted an additional energized smelter and enrichment chamber because I wanted the original two to be dedicated to just that ore doubling. Now that my mining capability has been improved with the mining gadget, my inventory fills up with junk really fast. So to fix this, I created a dank. Yeah, that's right, it's called a dank. I really have no idea, so don't ask me why. This innocent looking item stores an incredible number of bulk items and will automatically store the various items I tell it to inside of it. The emerald upgrade was way too expensive, so I just settled for the gold level dank. I wanted to give my new setup a whirl, so I spent all of days 33 and 34 mining whilst fending off all the monsters in my unlit tunnels. See, I told you night vision was a blessing and a curse. On day 35, I upgraded my shield to one made from refined obsidian, which has a lot more durability, and I also had no idea it existed until right now. I also noticed that I had a lot of XP stored up, and as you hold more XP, each level is worth more and more. This means that enchanting when you have 57 levels is way more expensive than the same enchants at 30 levels. Thus, I decided to craft an insightful crystal. This is an item which has the ability to store my XP for me. The insightful crystal though needed an experience bottle which can be crafted from honey, so I ran out looking for a beehive. It took nearly a full day, but I finally found one, smoked it out, and sheared it. But, silly me, I needed a honey bottle, not a honey comb. But luckily there is a block called a manual centrifuge. This allowed me to extract the honey from the comb while I turned a crank. I then crafted the crystal and let it hold all of my levels. Now that I had my XP all sorted, I decided to craft some hell shelves. These would allow me to enchant items with an XP level of 45 instead of the default 30. I was going to be doing a bit more fighting in the near future, so I wanted as much protection now as I could get. However, the bookshelves were super expensive and required both blaze rods and potions of regeneration. So I ended up spending all of days 36 and 37 in the nether fighting ghasts, blazes, and wither skeletons with fire arrows. Not my idea of fun, especially being about 12 hours into this attempt, but eventually I collected enough materials and went home. On day 38, I brewed up the regen potions, accidentally destroyed my old house with a mining gadget, and crafted the 15 hell shelves. When I placed them down, I realized that I would need to first remove the existing enchants on my current armor before enchanting them again, and if this was vanilla, I would just use a grindstone, but then I would lose all of my enchants. But in modded, there is an alternative called an enchantment extractor from industrial foregoing which would save those enchants. However, as you might imagine, there is quite a process to get there. You might want to take out your popcorn for this one. To start off with industrial foregoing, I crafted some fluid extractors which suck latex out of logs. I then piped the latex into a latex processing unit to convert that into tiny dry rubber. With enough of the tiny dry rubber, it can be crafted into dry rubber and smelted into plastic. Phew, I'm gonna take a breather real quick. Okay, with the plastic, I was able to craft a mob imprisonment tool, mob slaughter factory, and disillusion chamber. The purpose of the mob slaughter factory was to kill mobs and convert them into liquid meat and pink slime. I set up an automatic chicken farm to provide the mob slaughter factory with a renewable source of animals, but I was too impatient to wait for chickens to spawn, so I used my mob imprisonment tool to capture mobs and just place them in front of the slaughter factory manually. Now, if that was the same cow that I spent 5 minutes earlier trying to save from the nether, then I'm sorry, it was for the greater good. Ah, pink slime. I must have everything I need, right? Wrong. I also needed ancient debris. I mean, come on, all I wanted was to remove enchants from my gear. While mining in the nether for ancient debris, I came across what looked to be an abandoned nether mineshaft. Now under normal circumstances, my curiosity would have gotten the best of me, but not this time. I was a man on a mission. Finally, I stumbled across enough ancient debris and went home to craft the enchantment extractor. Boo yeah! Check out how nice this is. To cap off my day, I used my bookshelves to re-enchant my gear. On day 44, I brewed up some potions of fire resistance. I upgraded them to the last 8 minutes and then used them to craft a charm. This item is awesome. When I right clicked, it would give me a temporary fire resistance effect. It's basically like drinking 20 second potions instantly rather than having to drink a potion and use up the entire 8 minutes in one go. After seeing that it worked, I daringly jumped farther into the lava for fun. Little did I know at the time, but this charm would save my life so many times later on. 
I noticed that my tools and some of my armor were starting to lose their durability. The enchantment I really needed at this point was mending. I made a small space in my old house for a Fletcher and a librarian, and then I went to one of the nearby villagers, kidnapped some of them while no one was looking, and placed them in their spacious new homes. I spent the next 17 minutes straight breaking and replacing the lectern until I finally got a mending book. It took 17 minutes. I traded a bunch of sticks with the Fletcher and managed to get enough books of mending for all of my tools and armor. On day 47, I used the anvil to add all those mending books to my stuff and then went on a mining session to get some XP and repair everything. While mining, I was attacked by an evil chest monster. It jump scared me so badly that my fingers smashed against the keyboard, causing me to accidentally swap the positions of my shield and my paxel. I then fumbled around for a bit, but thankfully regained control of my character and took care of the chest. I also came across a zombie piglin boss that was wearing fully enchanted netherite armor. And it set me on fire whenever I hit it. Thankfully, I was able to activate my fire resistance charm and again, I kind of cheesed it by just swiping at its feet. I didn't want to take any chances. Later on, I unlocked one of those trinkets, but this time it was actually something useful. I could now use ender pearls infinitely. I returned home and took a look at all my loot. Now that is what I would call a successful mining session. Day 50. Wow. At this point, I was basically halfway there and had survived longer than any of my previous attempts but I still had so much left to do. I hadn't even started on the immersive engineering mod, which is where I could craft that railgun that I said I'd be fighting the ender dragon with. Throughout days 50 and 52, I did a lot of housework, got myself a wireless crafting grid that worked up to a range of 32 blocks, crafted a flux capacitor, which is like a large battery that I can carry around in my inventory, upgraded my machines, and collected more materials. On day 53, I started setting up my auto crafting system for my refined storage. This is a crazy cool feature using patterns. Basically, I can teach the storage system how to make certain items, whether that be by simple crafting recipes or even processing operations like smelting. I won't go into all of the details as this isn't meant to be a tutorial, but all of this auto crafting voodoo centers around two main items, which are crafters and interfaces. Oh, and here's one of those times I talked about where the charms saved my life. I spent days 54 and 55 setting up the auto crafting infrastructure and teaching the system how to craft and process various commonly used items. Alright, if I plan on fighting the ender dragon anytime soon, it's time to get started with immersive engineering. But to do that, I first wanted a little more space for it. I spent days 56 through 63 building the new factory. <music> On day 63, when breaking a misplaced log, I unlocked a new trinket. This one allowed me to ride a pig without the need of a carrot on a stick, and ride it really fast. I had to test this out immediately. I slapped a saddle on the first pig I saw and hopped on, and oh my, this little piggy had some speed. I used a lead to secure my piggy and added in a path to connect up the new factory. From day 64 to 70, I worked on setting up all the machines that I would need for the railgun. Now the railgun uses different types of rods as ammo, the best of which is graphite electrodes. Those are crafted through a really complex process and use up a lot of coal. One of those processes is converting coal into coal coke. This also produces creosote oil, which I needed for making treated wood for the engineer's workbench from immersive engineering. I then crafted a metal press mold for the rods and put that inside the multi-servo press to make steel rods. These steel rods are part of the recipe for the main components of Immersive Engineering's multi-block machines. The first one I built was the Industrial Squeezer. This machine will take in coal coke dust as the input and convert it into HOP graphite dust. Right clicking with a hammer activates the machine. The next machine to build is the metal press. This machine will take smelted HOP graphite ingots and convert them into the graphite electrodes, which I'll use as my railgun ammo. All I have to do is toss the ingots onto the conveyor belt and let the machine do its thing, and then pick up the rod on the other side. 
Now, I don't want to sit here and manually transfer the items between machines, so I spent a few days automating the process. By connecting the various machines with pipes, I was able to create a fully automated manufacturing process. Each rod costs half a stack of coal, so given the fact that my aim is terrible and that I actually planned on defeating the Ender Dragon, I went mining for some more. And once again, charm to the rescue. On day 71, I crafted the railgun. There were quite a few components that went into it, but it was nowhere near as involved as the graphite electrodes. I picked up some ammo from my output chest and went to test it out. I found one of those zombie brutes and boom, one shot. Now, I wanted to use this weapon for normal combat, but I didn't want to waste 32 coal for every shot I took, so I decided to save the graphite electrodes for the dragon fight and settled with iron rods for regular ammo. These were so much cheaper and still did some hefty damage. After giving my railgun a paint job, I went to test my accuracy on a fly. Boom, first try. Wait, wrong clip, sorry. Boom, first try. I then took my pig for a run, but this happened. Turns out blueberry bushes also hurt. No worries, I found a horse to replace it. I continued exploring, took care of a witch, but I felt bad for the cat, so I decided to bring it home. I thought I was using my 200 IQ by bringing the cat home sideways while in F5 mode, but it turns out I probably should have been looking where I was going. As I was enacting my revenge on the nearby monsters, the gods seemed to forgive me and I unlocked another trinket, and this one was so OP. Whenever I was under attack, it would spawn vexes to fight with me. All of a sudden, for some reason, I was feeling much safer. Day 72 was still a sad day though, so the next morning I decided to honor my pig and dig him a grave. Rest in peace, my friend. After grieving for a perfectly appropriate amount of time, I told myself that the deaths that day weren't my fault. Actually, they were entirely my fault, but no need to focus on the details. On day 74, I brewed up some potions of swiftness to make another charm. A little extra speed couldn't hurt. I kidnapped another villager, stuck it in another spacious cubby, and made a cleric. I figured it would be the best way to get enough ender pearls for finding and activating the end portal. I leveled it up, traded for the pearls, and then visited the nether for some more blaze rods. 14 eyes of ender should do the trick. But before taking on the ender dragon, I wanted to try a few more things I was previously too scared to do. The first of which was the woodland mansion. I spent days 76 through 79 taking on two woodland mansions. Yeah, two. There was a second one just a few blocks away from the first one. My new little Vex buddies really helped out, however it got quite confusing when I got up to the top floor and fought the real Vexes. I literally had no idea if I was killing the friendly ones or the evil ones. I spent day 80 staring at all the totems I collected and bouncing around with a cool slime slingshot thingy I found. Oh, and I also was about to kill this wandering trader when I noticed it was selling wither skulls and totems. What? It only let me buy one totem and five skulls, but still, what? On day 81, I felt quite overconfident with this many totems under my belt and decided to fight the wither. I ate a golden apple first just to be safe, and thank goodness I did, because this happened. Now since when does firing a railgun also throw an ender pearl and teleport me? Like, actually, what? The wither effect lasted for 40 seconds and took me down to 4 hearts. If I didn't have my golden apples on hand, things probably would have been pretty bad. Hilariously, while I was looking like a complete noob, my vex buddies were actually dealing some serious damage to that wither. I went back to help, but was immediately shot again, and also attacked by a skeleton with an enchanted bow. This time I dropped to three and a half hearts. While I was waiting again for the wither effect to run out, my vexes dealt the final blow. It wasn't until watching the recording that I realized my initial shot didn't even do any damage. I literally contributed nothing to that fight, and almost died. Oh well, now I have another star. Yay! Day 82 was pretty boring. After being reminded I was in hardcore mode from the wither fight, I spent the entire day eating different types of food to unlock additional hearts. On days 83 through 85, I decided to take on some bastions. I was hoping to find a pig step disc, but after looting three bastions, I was ultimately unsuccessful.
I did get a lot of gold though. I'll be honest, at this point my heart was racing pretty fast. I had defeated two woodland mansions, had the most stressful and embarrassing weather fight in my life, and looted three bastions, all on the course of nine days. Not to mention, I'm on day 86. If I died at this point in my attempt, I think my nice double monitor setup may be downgraded to a single. So I took a breather and did some building. I made a nice house around my enchantment table, extended my farm for flax and carrots, and built my horse a cute little stable. I wanted to give my horse a name, but I had trouble thinking of something clever. Who knew this whole naming process was so hard? Oh well, llama it is. I actually really liked how the enchanting room and stable turned out. The area was still feeling a little bare though, so I added a custom tree. Nice. Day 91. It was time. I was going to fight the ender dragon. I mounted my horse and threw some ender eyes. Now the number of eyes I had to throw was a little embarrassing. But I finally figured it out and dug down. When I broke my way in, I was in the library. After 7 minutes of killing mobs and looting chests, I finally found the end portal. I was pleasantly surprised by the beautiful void in this mod pack. It kind of made me want to jump in. I whipped out my railgun and took down the end crystals one by one. I was hit by the dragon once while pillaring, but thankfully I MLG umbrellaed. I then started sniping the dragon with my graphite electrodes. They did quite a lot of damage, so before long the dragon was down. On day 93, I collected the egg. I forgot to bring a torch, but this weird lantern in my inventory worked just as well. I looked around for the outer islands portal thing, whatever it's called, and noticed that it was directly over the void. Great. I staircased up to it and crawled through. Time to find that elytra. I saw a blue biome and realized that the cool end mod was in this pack too. I never played it before, so I was super excited to explore. I found a weird portal thing at the time I had no idea what it was and was a little scared, but it turns out that this portal can take you back to the overworld if you activate it. This island didn't really have anything, so I started bridging. Now, I'm not a speed bridger, I'm the type of bridger that has their pinky pressed so firmly against the shift button that it starts shaking and my hand starts to get a cramp and then I'm worried that I'll let go, and if I fell into the void, not even a totem would save me. So yeah, this was kinda stressful. I found a temple and went inside. I took care of the annoying endermite spawners and made my way down. I tried to be very smart and deactivate the explosion by breaking the redstone. Turns out, I apparently don't know how redstone works. I traveled back across my bridge and went a different direction. There was this massive purple mountain thing, and I thought there might have been something inside, but there wasn't. I then entered a beautiful pink biome with cool floating lights, followed by another biome with these crystal ball things. I purled over to the next island and continued exploring. I found what looked to be a shipwreck of an end city ship, so I thought maybe there'd be an elytra still in there, but there wasn't. On my way out, I ran into this plant that gave me a floating effect like the shulkers gave. It only lasted for a little while, so it wasn't too bad, but it was pretty interesting. I also found a dungeon thing with some shulker boxes, but instead of just grabbing the boxes, like any smart person would do, I took a few items from inside them and left. Derp. Day 94. I came across another ship thing, but this one was different. It looked bigger, so I assumed it would have some good loot in it. I was wrong. There was nothing. Later that day I found a fiery biome and bridged my way over to it. I liked the look of the logs, so I collected a few. I found these fly things in a different biome and was a little worried they were evil, but turns out they were just some friendly dragonflies. Then I saw this. Holy! I pillared up to it because I was curious, and when I got there it literally looked like an entire biome. This was crazy. I continued exploring and found some hot springs. This ender pearl took a frightening amount of time to teleport me. But it turns out it landed in water, so it must have just slowed down. A little bit of bridging later, I came across an end city. There was no ship, but I fought it anyway. The top of the tower actually had a shulker spawner in it, which was kind of weird. After leaving the city, I found a biome with oak trees and took a look around. It was quite odd and not really a place that I would like to live in. On day 96, I came across a purpur mineshaft. While I was down there, I made a very bad jump 
and got super lucky. I decided it would probably be smart to leave. Later I saw this treehouse. It was very pretty inside and actually made me want to build a base inside the end at some point. There was no loot though, so I bounced. At this point, I was actually getting a little bit worried about not finding an elytra. I had spent four whole days exploring the end and hadn't found an end city with one. And there were only four days left before day 100. Just when I thought I would have to go back and edit my intro just to remove the elytra goal and make it look like I actually accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish. Just kidding, I would never do that. I found a shipwreck that must have fallen from the heavens. Inside the loot chest, there was a map. Not a map to a hidden treasure like in the overworld, but a map to an end city. Let's go. I booked myself over there, worried that it would be a teeny tiny city and I'd have to find another one, but after a little bridging and some purling, on day 97 I made it. And oh my god, this end city was beautiful. Honestly, vanilla Minecraft should just adopt this end mod. It makes this dimension so much better. I fought my way up to the top, slaying shulkers left and right. Nothing at this point could stand in my way. This end city actually had some nice loot. I used a hit from a shulker to float my way over to the boat and landed on top. When I started making my way down, I noticed a phantom spawner. I really didn't want to get knocked off, so I dug down into the balloon and took the spawner out from the back while my vexes were taking care of the phantoms. I made my way down into the compartment underneath and was greeted with a few more shulkers than the vanilla version has. After taking care of them, I grabbed the elytra with three days to spare. I then went back up and grabbed the dragon head and got out of there. Take a look at my mini-map. That is how much end I had to traverse on foot just to find this elytra. That's crazy. On day 98, I waste on back to the overall to grab my horse and rode back home. When I got back, I placed down some trophies and also placed down the treasure map that had led me to the end city. I spent the rest of the day dumping all of the loot I had found from the end into my storage system. On day 99, I decided to make a shrine for my dragon head and egg. I used a combination of blackstone, crying obsidian, and purple, and some cool pedestals to display the dragon head and the egg on top. The rest of day 99 was spent farming and crafting some more golden carrots. Day 100. I had one main goal for today, don't die. I literally considered digging myself into a hole and waiting there for 15 minutes, but then I had the idea to craft up some rockets and take a fly around with my new elytra. I took a trip down memory lane by visiting the ice river from day 2, sat on my bed for a bit, and flew around my home. When nighttime approached, there was one more thing I wanted to try, sniping a monster with my railgun while flying. Nice. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know by putting llama in the comments. I hope you enjoyed and can't wait to get started on the next one. Now would you prefer 200 days in this pack or 100 days in a new pack? Let me know down below.